فاتحہ بسم الله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على خاتم النبيين سيدنا والنبينا أشرف المسلمين شفيئنا أبي القاسم محمد اللهم صل على محمد وعلى محمد وعلى الطيبين الطاهرين والمعصومين وَلَعَنَتُ لَهِ عَلَىٰ أَدَائِهِ أَجْمَعِينَ أما بعد فقد قال الله سبحانه تبارك وتعالى في قلال المجيد وفرقان الحميد اسم الله الرحمن الرحيم وآتسم بأبله جميعا ولا تفرقوا واذكروا نعامة الله عليكم إذ كنتم عادا فلاف بين قبل قلوبكم فاسبحتم بآه متهيخ ونن وكنتم على شفاء خفرة من عناري فانقثكم منها كثلي كي يبينوا ألاه لكم آياته لآلكم تحتدون سلوات At home firmly to the rope of Allah all together and do not become divided and remember the favor that Allah has done to you when you were enemies and he brought your hearts together and you became by his favor brothers and you were on the edge of a pit of fire and he saved you from it. Thus does Allah make clear to you his verses so that you may, so that you may be guided. Salawat. The ayah which I have just recited is ayah 103 of Surah Al Imran. And is an ayah that reflects on the principle of friendship. We see that in this very ayah itself, the emphasis that Allah puts upon friendship you can tell by the way he puts direct reference with friendship and the concept of heaven and hell. When we talk about friends, we don't just mean the people who we just say hi to in school. We also mean people who we meet at mosque, at madrasa, also our neighbours. The list goes on, as you can see what I mean. And you can see in the ayah just recited that they have a capability to play a very significant part in our lives. And at the same time, we also need to think about ourselves, that are we a good example of a friend? Are we a good friend to other people? Salawat. <laughs> Yet, when we look at friendship, we need to make sure that our friends are not of bad character, so to speak. The Quran narrates this in Surah al Muhanna, Ayah 13. O you who believe, take not as friends the people who incurred the wrath of Allah. Surely they have been in despair to receive any good in the hereafter, just as the disbelievers have been in despair about those buried in graves. We learn from this fact that we must not be friends of wrongdoers, yet we must not be wrongdoers ourselves. Solely for the fact that we as friends and our friends can play great influence on our lives and us onto their lives. So say if I had if I was a bad character, what would my my friends, so to speak, would also be influenced, they would also have bad character, if you see what I mean. And as you can see, but by this way that uh, friendship can play big in play a big role in our lives, that it's not something we joke about, it's a big thing. Salawat. I just want to quote two relevant quotes whilst we're on the basis of friendship. The first one is from Imam Ali alayhi salam. That he said that a friend can be judged in three ways. The first one is at the time of your need. So you need something, you know, for a trouble, say, so to speak. Behind your back and after your death. 
The second one is an Arab proverb. Many of you might have heard this in the past. That to look at the character of a man, look into the character of his friends. So what can you draw by this small sample of references towards friendship? We can certainly draw the fact that we need to choose our friends carefully as well as be good friends ourselves. We need to find trustworthy, loyal friends who have good character. Just think to yourself, could you trust your friends? Could you love them when you need them the most? Are they a good influence? And at the same time, you need to look at yourselves. Are you a good influence? Can people rely on you when they need you the most? Salam. Ourselves, that are we as good a friend? Um, are we good friends? We don't want to necessarily, we don't want to be like those friends of the Prophet who abandoned him in the Battle of Water when it was crunch time, so to speak. We want to be friends, for example, like, the, like, like Imam Hussein was to Habib ibn Mazahir and vice versa. Now, Habib. At the time of the arrival of Muslim Ibn Abiyyah in Kufa, he found himself being one of the many people who abandoned him upon the arrival of Ibn Ziyad. Flooded with guilt, he was, after the death, he was flooded with guilt, deeming himself responsible for Muslim Abiyyah's death. However, upon the arrival of Imam Hussein's caravan into Karbala, Imam Hussein then sends a letter to send for Habib. Soon, as the message was smuggled, so to speak, into Kufa, the message of Imam Hussein was at the door of Habib whilst Habib and his wife were having dinner. At this point, Habib answered the door to, to see the messenger, who said, Oh Habib, Mor Hussein has sent a letter for you. Habib then took the letter, he read the letter, then he went and sat back down next to, with his wife, and his wife asked, Who was at the door? Habib then replied, It was a messenger of Mor Hussein. He sent me a he has sent me a letter requesting him to come to Karbala. So then his wife asked, what are, you, what are you planning to do? Habib then replies, I am thinking about it. Then his wife shouted out in rage, Oh Habib, Hussein is still in Karbala and you are still thinking about it. If I were you, I would immediately go towards Karbala at this instant. Even if you die fighting for Mora Hussein, I will be content by eating sand and knowing that, knowing that you have died for Mora Hussein. She finally added, Oh Habib, leave before it is too late. Go help Mora Hussein. Soon Habib made plans to leave next morning. Now I just want you to imagine the scene at Karbala. We have one side where you've got Yazid's troops. You have them flooding in unit by unit, division by division and it's swelling in numbers. And then when you look at Imam Hussein's side, you find that there are only 72 people who are alone, who have nobody coming to them. But then, when you look towards the horizon, from the direction of Kufa, you see a figure coming. You see the figure, who is Habib, Ibn Mazahir. He comes towards Imam Hussein's camp. He comes, he says salam to, he gives his salam to Imam Hussein. Bibi Zainab then hears that Habib has arrived. He then asks Bibi Fiza to give, to convey her salams to Habib. When Habib goes and when Fiza goes and conveys her salams to Habib, Habib then responded by saying, How fortunate are the companions of Imam Hussein that the daughter of Fatima Zehra should honor them with greetings. You can see here, what I referred earlier, the friendship, the loyalty between these two people. <coughs> On the day of Ashura, when Habib went out into the battlefield, he fought courageously. But how much can an old man take from the heat and the thirst of Karbala? He soon fell from his horse and, was, and then martyred and was martyred and departed from this world in Imam Hussein's hands. Now before I finish, I just want to point out um, one final thing. That in Kufa, when the heads were being paraded through the streets, his son, Habib's son, Asim, saw his father's head being dangled from the neck of a horse. He then approached the the commander at the time and asked, can I have the head of my father so I can bury him? Then 
It is narrated that when he asked that, the head of Habib looked into the eyes of Qasim as if he was meaning to say, Oh Qasim, why are you after burying my head when Imam Hussein's head is still on the spear being th paraded through the streets of Kufa? Yeah, same. 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 Same.